we're still trying to express all the terms in our differential equation. Um, so now we want to talk about combustion. Um, we're back with our, so we have here our, our basic differential equations in black is the, uh, the terms that are common to closed and open systems. And in red is what you have to add if you're considering the valves being opened and closed. Um, so we've looked at, in a different video, you can look at heat transfer. In this video, we're going to look at combustion. So here I'm going to clear, oh, I'm just going to erase a bunch of things. So here, now we're not gonna look at the heat transfer from the wall, take all of this out. So now we just want to know how does, uh, how does heat get released through uh, combustion? So if we have a, so if at some point we start, this is the start of, so for an auto cycle, this would be not the start, this would be the spark. Or for diesel or dual cycle, this would be the start of injection. So before this point, the that term is zero. After that point, um, that term is no longer zero until we reach, whoop, we're going to take all of this out. So until we reach uh, either the end, well, the end of combustion or the end of injection. So until we reach, it's usually correlates here. This is the end of combustion. Yeah, end of combustion. So when we reach this point, that means all of the, uh, all of the heat from the chemical uh, release has been added, and we can stop uh, computing this term. So here, let me just move this a little bit. I'll go back to black. So Q dot combustion is equal to, and then we're going to put a bracket like this. It's equal to zero if theta is less than theta spark or theta injection it's equal to some function while combustion is happening, or it's equal to zero if theta is greater than theta and of combustion. And it's a good idea for this term and actually for, for this term and for the mass injection, uh, it's a good idea to actually switch it off. The heat transfer term, well, it always occurs. So you can actually leave it there as you're computing throughout the entire cycle <clears throat> but for heat transfer, it's a good idea to actually switch it off, to actually check. And actually what, what I do is I start from the point where the valves are closed, and then I integrate with only the heat transfer term. And I say integrate from theta is equal to, let's say minus pi, all the way out to whenever you want to start injecting, let's say seven degrees before top dead center. Stop the injection. Note down what's the pressure and work. And then you restart with a different function that contains this term here. And then you integrate from there until the end of combustion, and then you stop the, the, you stop the, the, um, the integration again, the numerical integration. And then you, you note what the pressure and what the work is, and then you restart the combustion, uh, the integration with only the heat transfer term, but until you get to opening the valve, and then you switch to the open system and so on. Okay, so what is this function? Well, it turns out we're gonna use, uh, at least in this kind of modeling, we're gonna use the correlations again. We're gonna talk in the class about actual combustion and the thermochemistry of combustion and how do the, the, uh, the different uh, molecules rearrange and how to calculate the heating value and so on. Um, but in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, of um, um, this type of, of simplified modeling, uh, we're going to keep this term, we're going to use a correlation that makes this computations uh, easier for the computer. Okay, so this function, so here I'm just going to write Q dot combustion. Um, well, actually, it's going to be based on a value XB, which is the fraction burnt. So XB is going to go from zero to one. So it's zero, nothing is burnt, nothing is burnt, nothing is burnt. And then bam, it comes to start of injection. And then it's going to start. So if I were to plot versus theta and I plot my function XB, then it's zero. I'm going to plot it in red. 
maybe zero like this until we have theta spark, let's say. And then it's going to have this general shape like this. So at first it's slow, then it accelerates, and then, then it slows down until uh, theta end. And what is theta end? Well, it's theta spark plus theta d, which is a certain number of crank angles that are needed to complete the combustion. And then it's going to be equal to one at that point. Let's take this black. So I'm just going to extend this a bit higher. And then this value is xb is equal to one. You actually stop it a little bit before because of the exponential nature. It would actually take, and this is true in actual combustion, it would take an infinite amount of time for you to actually complete uh, the combustion. So numerically, you have to stop it a little bit before. Okay, so xb is the fraction burn. So we have a function that describes how this actual, um, how this actual curve looks. And this function, I'm just scrolling through. So again, if you go into the course reserve, um, if you go into the course reserves, um, you uh, can download, there's an excerpt from our class book. And the title of this one is called Thermodynamic Analysis. And you'll be able to get the chapter that talks about combustion. And so we have a, so in this particular case, so Q dot combustion, well, actually the, so Q dot combustion here, I'm going to erase it. I'm going to take just one little step back. So I'm going to say Q. So not the rate at which, not the speed in, in, so this would be in, this would be an actual like kilojoules. This is the amount of energy that has been liberated. This is going to be equal to XB, the fraction of, um, of the fuel that has been burnt, multiplied by Q in, the amount of heat that would be released per kilogram of mixture. Um, Yeah. So now we know that this is going to be equal to XB. So from work before, we know this is going to be equal to QHV over my air fuel ratio plus one. Right. So from that, so QHV now is a property of the, it's a, a property of the actual, um, uh, of the actual uh, fuel and the air fuel ratio is one operational parameter. Um, it's you sort of, you set the air fuel ratio and this is this, the, this is the conditions at which your engine is burning or your, your process, your combustion is happening. But what I want is not the amount of heat that's released. What I want is the rate at which energy is released. So I want DQ combustion DT and that's going to be equal, well, this stuff on the right, the QHV over air fuel, that's a constant. So that's a constant, it's not going to change. And then we have DXB DT. And from correlation, so if we look in the book, for example, so we use what we call the VB function. This is a good correlation function that is easy to uh, compute. Um, and that's going to be equal to, so for a, so now that's going to depend on the actual engine you're running. So this correlation, for example, for an auto cycle would be, uh, let's see, let me just get it right. This is going to be N times A, theta minus theta start over or theta spark over theta D raised to the N minus one exponential, so E to the power of minus a theta minus theta start over theta d to the n, like this. So really this is telling me that dxb dt is equal to this. dxb dt is equal to that stuff out there. So I could actually work out what is the, the underlying function. It's an exponential function. Um, what is the underlying, it's a slightly modified exponential function, but what's the uh, underlying um, function for XB? And this is, um, so we can look for uh, particular parameters. I don't have them in front of me, but if you can read that section, then you can find what the value of N, these are constants. So what's a good value of N? What's a good value of A? Theta S, that's actually an operational parameter. Theta S is when you want to start the spark. 
aha. And that has a huge influence on how your engine runs. So that's what we call timing. That's the spark timing. When you modify your, your engine parameters, if you, if you retard or you advance the spark timing, what you're doing is you're starting the combustion a little bit earlier, a little bit late. You can model this with this theta s. And then theta d, that's more or less a constant, actually. That's the, that's the amount of time it takes for uh, the combustion to occur. And we're going to talk about flame speeds and so on um, in a different video. Um, and you'll see that. Um, and from that video, you'll be able to see that theta d is actually roughly a constant. It doesn't actually depend on n that much. And that's it. If you shove this, if you know the fuel parameters, QHV, and the air fuel ratio at which you're running, uh, then you can play with this spark ignition timing um, and actually run your engine at different speeds. Now, if this is not a spark ignited engine, if this is a, a um, compression ignition engine, uh, there is such a thing as um, the double VB function. And if you look in the handout and the course reserve, um, this is equation 9.11. And there's some, uh, there's some actually mistakes in that particular version that I tried to fix. You'll see my scribbles by hand. But essentially, you put a value of theta, which should be a, a delta theta. Uh, but that's basically it. So it's actually two. So it's, it's a combination of two VB function to describe um, the early combustion that happens in a compression ignition engine. So when you inject fuel, you get this dispersion. And the fine droplets are going to burn very, very fast, whereas the bigger droplets are going to be limited by how fast they vaporize. So you get one initial spark of heat release, and then you get one long, like a long tail of how fast, uh, of uh, one long tail of uh, heat release for those basically big chunks uh, that are gonna burn. And so that's what this double, the double VB function essentially has two of these. It has, it has two of these terms. It has two values of N, two values of A and then you combine those two, you add them together. 